In the world of wealth management and investment, there is a term that often catches the eye, but remains shrouded in mystery for many. Family offices. Family offices are more than just financial advisors. They are the backbone of wealth preservation and legacy planning for the ultra wealthy. I spent two years working in Singapore at the family office of one of Asia's richest families. In this video, I'll take you behind the scenes and give you a glimpse into the inner workings of a family office. So, what is a family office? Let's think of Bill Gates for a second. He is one of the world's richest men, having made his money by founding Microsoft. He is an expert coder, entrepreneur, and now philanthropist, but what he isn't is a financial planner. According to Forbes, today he is worth around $128 billion, and it continues to grow. But while he spends much of his time these days helping the world's poor through his foundation, who is behind the scenes managing its money? That's where the family office comes in. A family office is a private wealth management advisory firm established by either a high net worth individual like Bill Gates or family like the Waltons of Walmart. The family office's sole objective is to grow the wealth of the family and preserve the wealth across generations. Family offices exist to ensure that the vast wealth amassed by families is not only protected, but grows through strategic investments and legacy planning. During my time working for a family office, we had a broad mandate of opportunities to explore. We explored buying and shorting public stock, acquiring private companies, putting money into private equity and venture capital firms, doing venture capital directly, basically anything that had promise. Family office wealth today stands at around $6 trillion, trumping the $4 trillion managed by hedge funds. Family offices, even today, are the sleeping giant of the investment world. With an estimated $84 billion in wealth expected to pass down to wealthy heirs over the next decade or so, family offices are only expected to grow in popularity. This will have a profound impact on the way that many businesses are funded in the future. The history of family offices can be traced back to the 19th century, beginning in Europe before making its way to America. Wealthy European families initially established the concept of the family office as a means to manage their sprawling estates, handle their diverse financial matters, and preserve their legacy across multiple generations. This model of wealth management soon caught on across the Atlantic, where America's burgeoning class of ultra-wealthy entrepreneurs and industrialists saw it as an ideal way to manage their fortunes. Among the American pioneers of the family office concept were the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers. The Rockefellers, in particular, are often credited with establishing one of the first family offices in the United States, which helped them manage their vast wealth, originated from the oil industry. Over time, Time, this early version of a family office evolved into a sophisticated, privately held company that not only managed investments, but also took care of tax matters, estate planning, and even philanthropic endeavors for the family. So what makes a family office so great for managing a family's money? Let's explore a few options, starting with just investing themselves, just as many of us do through online brokers. There are a few reasons why this doesn't work. The family is obviously great at building wealth, but managing it is a completely different story. Finances can get complicated quickly, especially with a large amount of money to manage. Plus, family members may not have the expertise or interest in managing investments themselves. Another reason is time. Families like the Gates or the Waltons are incredibly busy people. They don't have the luxury to spend hours researching and managing their investments. They need someone who can focus exclusively on growing and preserving their wealth. The second option is to appoint a private banker. The problem here is that although they're an expert, they don't work in the family's best interest. They are employed by the bank to basically extract everything they can in management and transaction fees. They aren't helping the rich out of the kindness of their heart, of course. By encouraging wealthy families to make more transactions, the banks make a greater number of fees, which is straight out of the family's pocket. This is obviously a major conflict of interest. The third option is to put money into the hands of a specialized investment expert, such as a private equity or venture capital fund. The issue here is the fees and level of control. When a private equity fund acquires a company, they'll build it up over a couple years and then sell it. Some of these companies can rotate between private equity funds several times, causing a lot of friction in investor value. Funds are often incentivized to take on as many investors as possible, as their fee revenue is directly tied to their assets under management. With more capital comes the need for more investment opportunities. And because funds often have a lifespan of 10 years or so, there is often an urgency to deploy the investor capital. If the value of the fund's investments decline, the fund manager will still make their management fee. If the value appreciates on the other hand, they often have a hurdle rate it must go up by before investors make anything. It's lose-lose. Additionally, the wealthy families have little to no control 
When the fund exits the investments, this means their wealth, something they have accumulated over a lifetime, is essentially in someone else's hands and they have no control over their wealth. The fourth option, and the focus of this video, is the family office. Sure, you have an entire office of people on the payroll, but what you get is a dedicated team of professionals who have absolutely no conflict of interest. Their job security and incentive structure is aligned with the growth of the family's wealth. The only KPI of this team is to grow the family's wealth and create a structure that sustains itself even when the family's back is turned. When you consider there are no time constraints to invest, family offices are often patient when deploying capital. As they're private entities, they can operate quietly too, pouncing at just the right time in ways many hedge funds and bankers cannot. Having a family office is more agile with dedicated teams, has greater secrecy around their movements, and has a team of experts that only serves your interest. It's a great model. There are many roles and responsibilities in a typical family office. This can vary widely depending on what sort of investments that they're making. First, you have your M&A team. These are the guys that provide deal flow for either acquiring, investing in, or selling businesses. They've usually come from investment banks, pension funds, or sovereign wealth funds. Their contacts can include the likes of bankers, lawyers, accountants, and anyone in the private equity and venture capital space. These contacts provide new opportunities for the family office to explore. The second group is the business development team. These are the guys that oversee the operations of the family's portfolio companies and explore growth opportunities to increase the asset's value. The third group is a mix of lawyers and accountants, depending on the outsourcing model of the family office. Wealthy individuals manage assets all over the world across many jurisdictions and as such, the company structure can be incredibly complex. Having a team with such expertise can be hard to find, and having this managed externally has its benefits of quickly accessing teams with a broader skill set. Often, family offices will just have a basic team that manages the day-to-day -day transactions and legal work of the office. So who are the typical people who have a family office? Think of Forbes for a moment. Every year, they create a list of the world's wealthiest people. As you scan the list, I'd say at least half of them would have at least one family office. Jeff Bezos, has Bezos Expeditions, Elon Musk has Accession LLC, Bill Gates has Cascade Asset Management, Larry Ellison has Lawrence Investments, and the list goes on. Each of them have billions of dollars scattered across potentially hundreds of accounts, jurisdictions, investments, businesses, philanthropic activities, and many more. Having a family office takes away much of the administrative burden. When Elon Musk bought Twitter, for example, his family office would have been responsible for sourcing the funds, restructuring his assets, and facilitating all of the administration required when acquiring a $44 billion asset. And if we think of Bernard Arnold, the owner of Louis Vuitton, he himself wouldn't have the time in the day to manage his $100 billion empire. As we have seen, Family offices play a crucial role in the financial landscape for those with significant wealth. They are not just about wealth management, but are a testament to the enduring power of legacy and financial stewardship. Through careful management of assets and investments, family offices are able to preserve wealth for future generations. They also provide a strong support system for the family members who may have different business interests and require guidance from time to time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see all of my future content in the personal finance and investing space. If you have any further questions about family offices or my experiences working in one, please let me know down below in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.